He's a professor emeritus at the University of California, Fresno, one of the smartest people uh, in the state of California, also author of The Second World Wars. He joins us now. Um, Ms. Chanson, thanks for coming on. So, Thank you for having me, Tucker. I think we can both agree, and any sober witness to this whole non-scandal over the past 11 months, I think would also agree we haven't found collusion between the Putin government and the Trump campaign. What have we learned from this hysteria over Russia? Well, I think we spent 95 percent of our investigatory resources, congressional, independent, media, political, and we came up with nothing on the collusion where 95 percent of the narratives, whether it was the Steele dossier, which involved taking the Fifth Amendment behind closed doors to the Devin Nunes' House Intelligence Committee or the unmasking and leaking in which uh, one member who was uh, unmasking claims now that the numbers that were amassed did not match the times that she did it in the case of Samantha Power. And now we have the Uranium One deal, we have the Podesta deal. So what we're seeing is that uh, the investigators are being the investigated and because there was never a collusion. And the reason with the Trump administration, and it begs the question, Tucker, was this anger, hysteria, A, as you I think rightly surmised, anger over the lost election that was blown, or B, was it an effort to overturn the election by impeaching or denigrating Trump to such a degree it was ineffective, or C, was it a preemptive, active uh, effort to disguise a lot of exposure in these scandals that we've talked about? Your prior guess was sort of, with all due respect, absurd. His logic is sort of, drunk driving is not a threat until you actually kill somebody in a car. Drunk drivers pose no threat because they haven't killed anybody lately today. And we don't, we don't really have 20% of our own uranium. We only have about 5%. And of that 5%, uh, that's used to, to generate about 20% of our electricity. So we're dependent on a company that's now controlled by Russian interests. And we should ask your guest, does he really think that today that if Bill Clinton went to Moscow, he would get $500,000 today? Or does he think that the Clinton Foundation would receive a donation of $145 million today from Russian interests? That, to believe that's absurd. The only reason they got that type of money because they had something to offer, and that was to green light, as you said, the authority of Russian interest to gain control of uranium, and they thought that at least it was in their strategic interest. Well, All I think part of a reset, reset effort by the Obama administration. I think that's a, a great question and more than a rhetorical one because as it happens, Richard Goodstein has not made it out of our studio yet. So I want to put him back on the screen and pose the question you just posed to you, Richard. Do you think if Bill Clinton went to Moscow today, he'd be getting 500 grand for a speech? He's getting money like that all over the place and it's certainly well past the point that Hillary was no longer a candidate. But do you really think when you've got a deal of this magnitude and importance going through and the former president, whose wife is one of the people signing off on the deal, gets a half a million dollars for a speech, I think we both agree that's insane, yeah. that the people who pay him expect nothing in return? I mean, come on. I mean, was it insane when Ronald Reagan got $2 million from a Japanese company? No, if he gave them 20% of our uranium well, supply. Well, I, mean, I again, would say so, yes. So, so what you're saying is, and I hate that Fox is doing this, doesn't subscribe to the free market, right? That's what... Bill no, Clinton. I don't always That's describe the, the free market, compare. actually. I think there is such a thing as greed. I think not every manifestation of capitalism is morally right. I think some of them are disgusting, well, honestly. Again. I don't know what to say. I mean, do you know what I mean? Like, prostitution is wrong. That's the market. But I'm just I'm saying, against so, it. So okay. was Reagan prostituting himself? My only point I'm is, saying, if you're pointing to big dollar numbers of speeches given say. by presidents, I'm sorry, you know, there's kind of a takes two to So, Victor, 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 Han Victor Davis Hanson, do you think it's fair to put Ronald Reagan in the same category as Bill Clinton. No, because Reagan, Reagan wasn't selling anything. He was out of office. This whole donation to the Clinton Foundation was predicated on the assumption that Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State and would likely be President of the United States. And you can ask your guest if he thinks this year or next year or the year after the Clinton Foundation is going to get $145 million from Russian interests. And he knows the answer is no, because they had something to sell. And that's what they sold. And they don't have anything to sell. So by their own calculation, they have no market value anymore. And the market is adjusted. There is a market, but it's not there is a free market, but what he fails to point out, it's not a crony capitalism market that Clinton indulges. Now they're in the free market, and they have no profit. There's no motive to deal with them, so they're not going to make any money. Good point. Professor Hanson, we're out of time. Thank you for the market lesson. Richard, I know you agree. Absolutely. 